Hello and welcome to another speed painting tutorial. This time we're going to go to the Warhammer 40,000 universe and we're going to paint some space wolves. Now for any of you that have tried to paint some space wolves before, you'll know that it is quite a difficult thing to do. There's a few different methods you can use. The first one is to get Mechanicum Standard Grey or Mechanicus Standard Grey from Games Workshop undercoat it with that and then paint it up with rust grey but that's all quite time consuming alternatively you can use grey sear and then the contrast method by using the uh, space wolves grey uh, contrast colour but all of those don't really give you the result that you want or if they do they take quite a long time to do it so i've been experimenting and i found the quickest way that I could possibly come up with to paint Space Wolves and get a decent result at the end of it. As always with these tutorials, the aim is to paint them as quickly as possible while still looking like you've spent a bit of time on them and not that you've just rushed them to get them on the table. So let's get started. As always, the first thing we need to do is undercoat the model. And for this, Army Painter have actually come to the rescue and released a paint called Wolf Grey. Uh, it comes in a can like this, just like a normal primer. I've always been very sceptical of Army Painter undercoats uh, and Army Painter paints in general. However, I was really impressed with this. I bought it to do undercoat a large Space Wolves commission I was doing. And I bought the Wolf Grey paint, you can see there, to go with it, which are 100% colour matched. Uh, so if you're going to paint Space Wolves, I highly recommend you buy yourself a can of this. And the paint to go with it. This is what it looks like on the model. As you can see, it's a good, bright Space Wolves colour. We don't need to paint it up or down, it is good to go. Now, the first step after undercoating is to use Agrax Earthshade, and we're just going to put that all over the model. You don't need to be particularly accurate, let's just get it everywhere. The only places you do need to sort of avoid is the uh, wide open areas on the shoulder pads because the brighter the colour underneath the easier it's going to be to paint the yellow on when we get to it. Otherwise get it on all of the armour and just make sure it doesn't pull too much on the open uh, armour plates such as on the legs or on the knee pads or any other areas that are large and flat. Once that's dry, we're going to switch to Army Painter Wolf Grey and we're going to get that blue colour back in. As you can see, the Agrax Earthshade has really dirtied that armour. So what we're going to do is use a dry brush, but instead of getting rid of all the paint off your brush, or almost all of it, you're going to leave uh, a lot more than normal uh, on your brush. And as you can see there, when I paint over the top of things, it's going to leave the deepest recesses um, coloured with or shaded with Agrax Earthshade but it's going to uh, make the rest of the armour nice and blue again. So go around all of the armour, being careful not to let your brush run into the recesses as you're painting over things. So as you can see there, I'm trying to avoid getting into any of the gaps so I can leave the shade showing. Once that's done, it's going to look something like this. And as you can see, it's really brought that armour wolf grey colour back up to how we need it to do the rest of the model. You can, alternatively, if you want to spend a lot more time on your model, you can just recess shade, Agrax Earth shade into all the gaps, but we're going for speed. Next up is Fenrisian Grey, and we're going to do another dry brush layer here, just aiming this time to use a traditional dry brushing method, and we're going to catch the raised areas to give a subtle highlight to the armour. With that done we should have a nice highlight layer to the armour and that is the armour itself pretty much finished now we need to start colouring in some of the details. First of all we're going to start using Black Templar and we are going to paint that into all of the armour joints uh, and the vents on the back of the arm plate. So just carefully go around and make sure that you, uh, you cover all of the um, ribbed armour joints that's showing through between the gaps in the armour. Uh, and then we'll move on to the next step. Once we're done with all of that, as you can see, I've gone round, I've done under his, uh, his rear end there, behind his knees, his neck, uh, and the joints at his elbows. We're then going to continue with Black Templar, and we are going to colour the weapons. Uh, so do the entire chainsword and the entire pistol. Um, just make sure to avoid the armour on the hands. If you do happen to make any mistakes at this point, 
you can just use some wolf grey to tidy up any of the armour areas that you've accidentally run over onto. Whilst the black is drying we're going to switch to wildwood contrast and we're going to paint in all of the leather details, so the holster and the belt. Now again just be careful not to get any of that onto your nicely coloured Space Wolves armour. Now when you've finished your black and brown layers, your model's going to look something like this. We're going to move immediately on to painting the next layer, which is going to be to use Avalon Sunset, and we're going to paint in the shoulder pads. Now be sure to water down your yellow properly, so you don't end up with a horrible chalky consistency. It's probably going to take a couple of layers on each shoulder pad to get it looking good and smooth. There's my first layer dry, so I'm going to go in with a second layer. If you're batch painting models, this is quite simple. You just paint your first layer on every model you're painting, and then just go back around to the beginning and paint the second layer on. It's actually a lot quicker than you'd think it would be. And there we have a nice smooth two coat finish on that Avalon Sunset which has left us ready to paint the next detail which is going to be Retributor armour, so gold. And we're going to paint in any gold details, that's going to be the Aquila on his chest uh, and any other hanging gold uh, icons that you sometimes find on intercessors. Next up we're going to use Rakarth Flesh and we're going to use that to paint any uh, additional details on the model such as purity seals or scrolls or banners which is what I'm going to be painting on the shoulder pad just here. And there's the Rakarth Flesh areas done on this model. Next we're going to use Lead Belcher to paint the metallic areas of the model that includes the chainsaw blades, some parts of the backpack, the, uh, the bottom of the holster and uh, some parts of the bolt pistol. And that's the metallic areas all done on this model. We're not actually that far off finishing it now. Most of the detail has been done as you can see. There's a couple of areas we've got to fill in. Now we're going to use Black Templar. You can use a bad and black. Any black you've got will do. And we're going to paint in the Space Wolves chapter symbol. If you're using uh, water slide transfers for this, uh, Obviously, you can skip this step and go straight on to the next bit. And there's that chapter symbol coloured black. Next, we're going to switch to Basilicanum Grey. You can use Nuln Oil for this step if you don't have Basilicanum Grey, uh, but I like the darker tone that Basilicanum Grey gives. And you're going to put that all over the metallic areas to shade those in. And with that all done, we are getting there. The next job is to shade in the other details we've not shaded in yet. And for that, we're going to use Agrax Earthshade. We're going to cover all of the gold areas and any Rakarth flesh areas uh, and any other details that we've not shaded in just yet. Next, we're going to switch to White Scar and we're very carefully going to paint in the eye lenses of the model make sure you're nice and careful here obviously you can touch anything up with wolf grey if you make a little mistake next we're going to use some caraba crimson shade uh, and that's going to create the red of the eye lenses all you need to do is get a small detail brush and basically rub it into the lens uh, and then Wipe it on your tissue to get the excess off and then just dab the centre of the eye lens and that will make the white show through again and give the illusion that the eye is glowing. Now we're going to use Mephiston Red to paint probably one of the fiddliest parts of painting Space Wolves and that is their unique pack markings. In this case, we've got an Assault Intercessor, so he's a close combat Space Wolf, and as such, he has the red and yellow markings, similar to Blood Claws. This can be difficult to paint, but I'm going to show you a nice, easy way of doing it. And the first stage is to paint three dots, quite evenly spaced apart, about three quarters of the way across the shoulder pad. Um, 
The next stage is to paint in between each of those dots on the other side some more red dots and that's going to give us our aiming markers to paint some neat lines joining them up and that's going to create those stripes or spikes or tooth looking uh, insignia going across the shoulder pad. I very carefully join those dots up and create that dagger looking effect going across the shoulder plate. It's really important that you thin your paint down nicely for this stage so it flows off the brush nicely. You'll see in a minute as I'm painting this shoulder plate my, my brush kind of dried out a little bit and made it really difficult for it to get off the brush and then I constantly had to go back to my paint. Keep working on joining all the lines up, connect one off the bottom, try and keep each of the uh, the, the red spikes, uh, for lack of better words, nice and neat across the model. And then once that's done, it's just a case of blocking in all of the red colour on the left hand side of the shoulder plate. And uh, that's the shoulder plate done. And here's the finished Assault Intercessor pack markings. All that freehand work is now done. If you've got other units, obviously the colours are different. So here, for example, is a regular Intercessor um, with the red and black markings instead. So here it is, our finished Assault Intercessor in the Space Wolves chapter colours, the classic version. Uh, so how long did this take me? Well... This particular model took me 26 minutes and 52 seconds to paint, which is pretty quick when painting Space Wolves. That is half the time it's taken me to paint them using the traditional method. So I highly recommend it if you're looking to get some Space Wolves on the table. I did a really simple basing technique for the ones you can see in the photo. That's just sterling mud on the base, dry brushed Carrack stone with some Valhalla and Blizzard on there because they're Space Wolves and what are Space Wolves without snow? And here's the entire squad painted using exactly the same method. As always, if this has been helpful for you, please do like and subscribe because then I know that it's useful for somebody and I can bother making some more to hopefully help you out. As I said at the beginning, Space Wolves can be kind of difficult, but if you use that Wolf Grey primer and make the most of a colour that is exactly what you're after, uh, it's going to make the whole process a lot easier and you're going to be able to get your Space Wolves on the table and not have to field a load of grey plastic in your battles. Thanks for watching.